So previously, between this bolt and that ground piece of weld on the frame, I had a 2010 Camaro alternator. And it worked pretty well, just didn't charge at 14 and a half volts because, you know, it's a two pin, needed a pulse width modulated signal to make it work. So I thought, hey, I'll buy a, you know, four pin GM and I'll just put that to the frame. And then it turns out they didn't mount exactly the same. The width is slightly different. So I was working on getting that mounted in there, hence why the ear is cut off. And a buddy of mine stopped over and said, why would you put that there? And I said, well, I did that at the time because with this intake that I made, the alternator is supposed to bolt here, and then it actually hits this part of the intake here. It just doesn't quite fit. So he said, well, why don't you make it fit? And I was like, stop being so right all the time. I should probably just fix or clearance the intake like chop this off a little bit so I can just run the right alternator, which would also allow me to run an AC compressor where it belongs on the engine so I can actually run like a vintage air kit on this. So um, looks like sometimes you just need somebody to tell you that you're being an idiot. So you stop being an idiot and uh, do that. So here we go. So as you can see here, when I put this on the studs, we have a contact tissue so my adapter plates this hole should be up to there so I need to take about mm, that much off that intake so I'm thinking if I just cut this here and angle it or do I cut it and invert it but one way or the other I need this to slide up about that far so Well, that's roughly what I'm thinking. Something like that. Here's what we got. All leaners tightened up on there. Got some cut action. Still definitely very close. But, if I box that in properly, maybe start to curve the ends in. I'll be able to have a regular old Ford alternator on this motor. A piece kind of chopped up close. I think I'm going to try to do it from the inside and just save as much clearance as possible instead of slapping the weld on the outside of the manifold. If I set it in, I'll just gain that little bit of clearance from not putting the thickness of the material outside the manifold so of course cut it too short there so I might just have to tap that lip up a little bit fill the gap but I think that piece may just work all I gotta do now is clean up this giant mess and prep the edges for some actual welding all right, ground off some of my paint there. I think I got this piece pretty much how I want it. I'm going to set it in there like that. I'm going to weld it up and kind of try to fold that edge in on the piece. Try to melt that down into that. That way, if anything, I'll be gaining clearance. So, like they say, I can weld. I am not a welder. So, this will work. Will it be amazing? The prettiest weld you've ever seen? Absolutely not. Does anybody care? I don't think so. Well, she's tight, but there is clearance.
that counts. So I might just have a Ford alternator now instead of having that weird dummy pulley thing I built. Well, squirted some uh, fresh texture on that. And my weld bunks for my radiator showed up today, so I guess we're going to do that. I think I'm going to put my temp sensor right about there. Ugly as sin, but functional. Another issue I've had is the fuel injector rail hold down mechanism. Five out of ten. So it was like a uh, pretty much like an electrical wall clamp with a couple rubber spacers under it. So I'm gonna see if I can make something better now that I have the time that I didn't have before. Brandy new FIC injectors. So, gonna break the seal. Never gonna be the same again. Looks like I got some ride height adapters on here. The lift kit with an injector. Hmm. Solid connection. Me some two inch aluminum angle here, and I think if a guy was to mark it and cut it, he could have a pretty good bracket situation going there. So, a little off the top, a little off the bottom, bingo, a few rail mounts. So I got that water nipple in there. And luckily, when my buddy Scott helped me build this coil mount thing, which is fun to hang on to, we left it shallow enough that this still fits under it. And it'll go through that notch there. And then I notched this out 
so that the hose, when it goes through there, will fit and hopefully give me zero troubles so I never have to take the whole intake system off to get to this one coolant connection because that'll be really fun. Guess I'm gonna try to sneak this in there and start the engine reinstallation process. This is my new Hughes converter, and I'm here to tell you, it's chunky. She's got some beefiness to her, so I was reminded kindly to not forget it before I got the engine in there. So let's do that. That escalated quickly. Starting to look like itself again. Got to work on getting this water neck thing kind of firmed up and, and where it's going to live forever and get a real thermostat in here and some bolts. And I think we have to lengthen this intercooler line because now we got some interference. It's kind of pulling down on some stuff. Alternator looks good in there. Never had one there before, so this is going to be interesting. 
Got to work on some oil lines yet. They go down in there. And the water outlet needs to come out of the bottom of the block there and across over to the uh, other side of the radiator there. So, got some more things to tuck in this cavity, let alone few lines that need to come out and into a regulator that I'm not sure where it's going to go yet. So, it's getting real busy in here real fast. Working on the fuel cell here. My buddy Scott made this for me. I gave him some dimensions and he, uh, he and his guys designed and welded this thing up for me. So it's a fully baffled. So I can get in there a little better. It's got like six compartments, as you can see by some of the welds on it. And it's going to run a single 450 over here. And I'm going to run a 4303 Magna Fuel when I come in to boost. So, as far as I can tell, I think this is going to be the best layout drawing from the opposite back corner of the cell and using a short piece of hose to this coupler and then I had another piece like a o-ring to 12 a.m. and then a piece of hose and that fitting and that and the thing was like you know this long so I think if I just do an o-ring to o-ring reducer 12 to 8 I'll be able to get this tightened right up and be able to kind of make it about that long so I guess I should get a fitting and mock it up before I commit to hogging a giant hole in the back of my cell. Well, now I've changed my mind. I like the back being clean when you look under it. And I have a fitting here, all the stuff, and then my line would have to make a 90, and you'd see just few line running along the side of this thing. It'd be kind of ugly from the outside. Whereas if I do this, I'm still drawing from the opposite corner of my other pump. And I get rid of 190 because it's just 190 here and it's going to go straight through and then straight out there and then up to my frame rail. So I'm thinking this is the way this was a 8 O-ring to 12 A-N. So then I cut the nose of it off and I tapered the end of it and made it flow like a mother. So I should probably buy a real coupler like that, but uh, the way I've ported and polished this one makes me tempted to use it. So... That shortens everything up real nice. <laughs> so that look real good. PTFE, this is dash 10 feed line. If you guys know anything about the PTFE lines that are stainless braid on the outside, if you have this extra coating on the outside, you have to cut that off in order to put your fitting on. And way back when, a friend of mine showed me this cool tool here for doing battery cables. And what that does is it has an adjustable cutter in the middle. You can set the stick out of it clamp it on the cable and you spin it around, cuts the casing for you. And I adjusted it for this. So when I stick this on there and do one of those, it's a lot easier than working around with a razor blade. Now on a battery cable, you turn this lever, it turns the blade 90, and scores it straight out. But I found it's not quite cutting it. So I just take a razor blade after, finish that part of it. Actually, I should probably get that pried open. And that makes that whole working around with the razor thing heck of a lot easier. Now that I've got some line attached, 
going to make up some whips for the fuel pump and the sending unit. So when I'm going to put this thing in, they hang down nicely and I can just plug them in without struggling. <laughs> 